in the article yeah. about it, it says, you know, he referenced this argument in his brief. And he kind of does. He says that there are some people who may want to sit in jail so they can see the magistrate in the, or the judge in the morning, which I've dealt with a lot of people in jail, and there's not a one of them that's ever wanted to, well, I'll just hang out and talk to the judge. Yeah. <laughs> it, it smacks of someone who's never met someone who's been charged with a crime, never talked to someone in Harris County Jail, doesn't really know anything about the process. The brief, I mean, of course, was beautifully written. It was a probably a $10,000 brief, honestly. Probably but more it, than that. Yeah, probably more. But it was written by people who have no idea how the system works. Um, they're probably going to win the brief because it was actually about the challenging the sufficiency of a temporary injunction, and the proof is a little light. But the arguments they make just clearly say, we don't know anything about this. We're just, just using federal law here and doing what we can with it. We're just but, super rich and super overpaid. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I'm not sure that they really are going to prevail on this at the end of the day. I mean, uh, they... Uh, You've got now, you've got a, a sheriff who's already come out, and he's basically taken a counter position. He says, look, it needs to be changed. I mean, how, how when you have the person who's being sued, who's now the name party in the lawsuit, uh, is, is actually advocating yeah. for the plaintiffs, so I think it's not going to go well. Yeah, the, the, the piece of, of uh, pleading that he drafted that contained the argument was arguing against the issuance of a temporary injunction right. because of insufficient proof for that extraordinary remedy. Um, so that's why I think they're going to, they may win on. But I think you're right. Most of the stakeholders in Harris County recognize the jail's broken. And so I assume we're going to get some fixes. But you I think mean, they'll it, win on that in, uh, temporary injunction argument? I'm not a federal lawyer, so I don't know for sure. But just reading the arguments, they're saying, you know, there's a very high burden to prove that temporary injunction is the appropriate remedy. Because what you're saying with a temporary injunction is, hey, give us what we want in advance of us proving that we're right. And then we'll prove that we're right later. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to show pretty good evidence that you're going to be right. What's, it's hard. And what's their position now? Okay, we get that, but what is the what are they arguing? So the the only piece of uh, pleadings I read was essentially that there is insufficient evidence to support the temporary injunction. I didn't read the full fair, fair, file fair. on Pacer as to what their argument is. But uh, one of their points is that uh, the bonding schedule is not per se uh, abusive, and that they allege that PC at PC court they uh, really look at an individual's ability to pay, which again, tells me they've never been to PC court, because uh, that does not happen. 